Finally guys, welcome to the last part of this course. I personally want to apologize. This one came in a little bit late. I'm trying my possible best to be as consistent as possible, but I also need you guys. I need your help. I, I, I need your comments. I need your likes. I need your share because that's absolutely what keeps me going. So let's get started for today. Okay, the first thing we're going to do here is to select our camera and add some depth of field to our shots. In the camera settings, turn the depth of field on and also turn on the limits. Okay, we are going to turn down the focus distance until we are able to see our focus point. So we are going to drag the focus point until it touches the character. As you can see, the character is now in focus. I'm going to turn down the level of my f-stop. I'm going to use 1.5. So let's head to the material settings for our character. Make sure that the blend mode and the shadow mode is both turned to alpha hashed. Okay, I'm going to select my character and click on H to hide him for now. So I'm also going to select everything that has to do with the lift. And I'm going to make sure that I apply all the modifiers for any object. Then I click on Ctrl J to join everything together. I need the leaf to be in one single model so I can easily move it around. Okay, so I'm going to create an empty that is going to serve as the handle for my lift. And I'm going to parent everything that has to do with the lift with this empty. So I select the lift, select the light, and select the empty last. Then I click on Ctrl P, then select Keep Transform. So we can now move the lift with just moving the empty I created earlier. Okay, now let's unhide our character by clicking on Alt H. Select the character and select the empty, then parent them just like we did to the lift. Now everything moves together as one. Okay, it's time to make some animations. Let's go back to the first frame and preview the whole thing. Around frame 80, where he's trying to tap a button on the lift, we're going to make sure we click the empty and then we do I, then select location to add the keyframe there move few frames forward then we select the empty and we start pulling the lift up so we keep pulling until we get to the top of the building okay i'm going to select the last keyframe we just added and i'm going to pull it until we get to about frame 350 Okay, it's time to animate our camera. So I'm going to select the camera, go to the first frame and just preview the whole thing and wait until he taps the button. When the lift is about to go up, I'm just going to click on I and do location. Then I go forward to about frame 350 and just begin to pull my camera until we can see our character. Let's preview the whole thing and make sure that the camera is following the character. If the camera is not keeping up with the character, we have to modify the keyframes a bit by selecting them and moving them backward or forward. Okay, so I'm going back to the first frame. I'm trying to give our camera an interesting movement from the beginning of our shot. So I'm going to select the camera and move it to the left or the right. So you can see we have a new animation of the camera coming in from one side of the shot before going up and following the lift to the top of the building. Okay, we are going back to our focus distance and I'm going to animate this focus distance in a way that from the first frame of the video we can see the car in focus then later on we see the character in focus so as you can see i'm pulling the focus distance to meet up with where my car is sitting right there then i'm going to go forward a bit in the frames when he's in the lift then i'm going to take the focus distance back to my character So it's going to create an interesting look 
where we get to see the car from the beginning of the shots and we later get to see our character in focus. Okay, let's take a look at our render settings before we start rendering. So let's select EV from the list. For the sampling, I'm going to leave everything as default as it is. Ambient occlusion, I'm going to change the distance to about 20. Then my bloom is default. Also make sure that you turn the bloom on. The screen space, you turn it on also. Motion blur, turn it on. For the shorter angle, I'm going with 0 0.7. For my color management, I'm using filmic and medium contrast. I'm going to set the location where I want to save my animation. My resolution is 1920 by 817. Then I'm going to stop the whole animation at frame 350 or so. Yeah, frame 350. Then that's all. I just have to render, render animation. Finally, this is what my final animation looks like. If you made it to this part of this whole course, I want to say congratulations. I also love to see your own version of this whole animation. Send it to me over on Instagram. And please like, comment, share, guys. Thank you.